This week I saw a question on my YouTube video, how can you teach or help an autistic child to speak? And so this week I wanted to dive a little bit more deeply into that question. Uh, so stay tuned. Now that you're here, I'm going to admit this probably isn't going to be the video you thought it was going to be. So I'm glad you're still here. First, I want to say, like, when I read this comment, I was disheartened. And there are, there are a few reasons for this. Um, you know, the first being there are many different forms of communication and all of them are completely valid uh, and some autistic children are gonna grow up and be autistic adults who are not gonna communicate in the typical way using words using spoken words like I am doing right now um, and unfortunately we have a lot of favoritism for clear spoken and well organized communication and using words in a typical expected way uh, and if you know a bit about autism already you might know that autistic people we are not very typical kinds of people and that is going to vary across you know all autistic people we're all very different we're all very unique we all have different ways in which our communication um, differs from what would be considered neurotypical or non-autistic um, standard communication. Uh, but, you know, some of us, you know, if our communication is different, that should still be okay and that should still be valid. Uh, and we, we, I wish we would see a lot less of the, this one type of communication is the gold standard of communication and it's better um, communication uh, because that's not how everyone uh, works and communicates. So, you know, there are many ways to communicate. Uh, some autistic people are potentially always going to use technology and tools, alternative communication devices, things like that to help them communicate if they do not have verbal speech or if they have times when speaking uh, verbally it becomes difficult. You know, for example, you know, even I who I'm very clear to you right now, and get into why in a little bit, I am very clear with you right now, have difficulty communicating, uh, say, if I get anxious or I am overwhelmed uh, or, you know, there's a few different scenarios where it can be hard for me to speak in this way where I am used to being able to communicate and sometimes it all just falls apart. Even sometimes if I'm too tired, it's words, words, you know, they're just gone. They're not there. Um, but, you know, there's also, you know, sign language, which is really great. I, you know, in elementary school, I had a friend who spoke with sign language and I don't think it's fair to those who communicate differently to say, oh, this one form of communication is, you know, the goal for everyone. Uh, I wish we would do a bit more of empowering people to communicate in the way that suits them best instead of forcing everyone to adapt to communicate to the majority you know of people's way of communicating uh, because we all have very different ways of communicating even between like neurotypical people don't all communicate the same way with each other you know there are little differences and nuances um, between communication. So, you know, with me, I mentioned that I was going to share why I'm so organized with you on screen today. One, because I can cut whenever I want and edit the video together. But also, you know, I take a lot of time to prepare and process um, before I get on the screen. And so I've actually typed out all of my thoughts and read through them a few times and reorganized them. Um, 
because you know if you if you uh, if you see me uh, in conversation face to face, um, you know everything is very in line. Uh, you know right now on the computer, but you know I've had people tell me um, that in conversation I can confuse people because of you know the order uh, of things that they come to my head. A ask ask poor David. Um, you know I but you know when I'm up here on my soapbox. Um, there's been a lot of preparation going into everything that I'm doing. That I that I'm doing. I'm not at all someone who can just go BS my way through something and wing something. Uh, there is just a lot of preparation and work and planning that goes into everything that I do. Actually, not just these tasks. Uh, I do tend to be very planned out as a human being. And so needing to be able to take that time to plan and process um, and get things out there in an organized way is really important to me. So that's one way that, you know, my own communication differs as well. When I get up on, you know, my, my soapbox and I do like a presentation or a talk, you know, I have practiced through it and I've organized myself and I know exactly what I'm going to say, you know, and I, I need, that goes back to me needing that time to process and prepare. Um, especially, you know, if I am going to discuss something that is a more abstract idea that doesn't translate, um, very easily into visuals, uh, like feelings or emotions, those things are probably the most difficult for me to talk about. Um, because I think in a very visual way. So I'm sure that impacts my communication as well. Um, you know, because in communication there is an extra step, there's extra time that goes into flipping my visual thought into words and being able to explain it. Um, and honestly, I do spend a lot of time, you know, in, in like more social casual settings, sitting in the background. Uh, and I might have actually a very deep desire to say something, but I might not know exactly how I can get it out in words. Like I will know what I want to explain and I will know what I want to say. Um, but the words are not there or I have words that just don't actually do what I'm trying to explain justice. And so I sit just not saying anything because I'm, I'm stuck. Um, and some of these concepts and feelings, because, you know, I, like I said, I, this virtual ver, visual thoughts, they don't have words. Um, and that makes things really impossible to explain. And that's really frustrating too, because sometimes it's like, I know something and I cannot share with you what I know because as far as where I am right now, there are no words for it or I have no words for it. Uh, and I can spend a long time ruminating and processing and trying to work out the words for something. Um, so that those are just, you know, some, some thoughts there, uh, about communication and how it can be different for autistic people and why I don't want spoken communication to be the gold standard. Um, a lot of us communicate better written when we have time to work out our thoughts and to process things and to get that out in, um, a space where we can more easily organize it. Um, let me know in the comments below, how is this for you? Are you like me? Do you work better uh, with typing things out? How do you communicate? Do you use communication tools? Do you use ACC devices? Let me know in the comments below. Let's share and learn with each other uh, so that we can all learn about how communication differences are between human to human. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.